Please join us in singing hymn number 362, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty in the blue hymnal, hymn number 362.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, all saints. The first lesson is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the dark. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is 29. Verses 1 through 11, which we shall read in unison. 
Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord. Worship the Lord, the Lord in the beauty, in the beauty of, holiness. of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is upon the waters. The voice is powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak tree rise, the strips the forest bare, and in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessings of peace. The second lesson is taken from Acts chapter 19 verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Our sequence hymn is hymn number 121, found in the black and red hymnal, hymn number 121, baptized in water.
Christ according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I find myself seven days into the new year asking myself the question, why? Why do I do what I do day in and day out, week in and week out, year after year. I find myself <laughs> asking, where am I in life? And have I really accomplished what it is that I thought I would accomplish by this age? Perhaps that comes with the territory of starting a new year, contemplating another birthday. Perhaps you, in your own life and in your own way, are asking yourselves similar kinds of questions. What is it that I'm really doing? Is this all that there is? And I rose up to tell you this morning, there is more. There absolutely is more. This feast that we celebrate today, the feast of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the ground of what I mean when I say there is more. Why? Because it finds us in our lives to give us a season and a time to renew our baptismal vows, to renew our baptismal covenant. Because sometimes you can get weary and well-doing. Lord, I'm trying to love everybody, but some of these folks are real hard to love. And I, All right, I'm tired. It has to be very wearying when you look on the news and see that our youth are still being gunned down in their schools. Hurry up, Lord. Come back. Or that people are still, three years later, saying that what happened on January 6th in our nation's capital was just a couple of people having a stroll. Lord, I am tired of watching and waiting and trying and loving Lord, is there more? Is there more to this life? Is there more to this existence? Of course there is more. And that more comes when we contemplate the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and formless. And you may be saying, 
What does all this have to do with renewal and beginning? Hey, here's, here's what it is. It's, it's kind of like if you lived in a home for a long time and you just get tired of looking at the same cabinets, tired of looking at the same countertop, and ca- tired of looking at the same decor. And so what you might find yourself doing is looking in our Detroit magazine and looking at all the big, fantastic, fabulous houses out in West Bloomfield. You say, I'm ready to move. And what you may not realize is that what you might need is a, just a fresh coat of paint, a throw pillow, maybe a nice charger to go under your china pattern. Yes, I know words. <laughs> a new table setting, a new tablecloth, a new throw, a new rug, a new area rug, or a new throw over that sofa can spruce up flowers. Because renewal comes not to obliterate what has been, but to bring freshness to what has been. You know, a lot of young people get a lot of flack in the church because they come with, quote unquote, new ideas. It's not a new idea, it's a fresh coat of paint. We want to allow room for the Holy Spirit to come and breathe afresh on us, to renew us. Because how many know that when you're weary, what you need is just a little bit of water, revival, renewal. And the voice of the Lord moved over the face of the water. That here we are, here I am, because I can talk about me. Seven days into the new year, and I'm reading these passages, and I'm like saying, Lord, please move upon the face of the waters. I need renewing. I need refreshing. I need to contemplate the beginning again. The power of this service is to remind us, just like in Genesis, it is never too late to begin again. That's why the season of renewal is so powerful. It's never too late to begin again. Well, one day has passed, 10 weeks have passed, 10 years have passed, and I have not picked up the phone to call that loved one, or I have not sent in my pledge form, or I have been delinquently late with that assignment that I said I was going to do, is is it too late? The damage that I've done to these relationships perhaps is too late. The purpose of this Sunday is to remind us there is no such thing as too late. That by the baptism of Christ, we are reminded that we can have a new beginning. I mean, it is just seven days after the year just started. We got plenty of time. (laughs) We have plenty of time. How about this? The Apostle Paul is traveling and says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you first believed? And they said, no. What Holy Spirit are you talking about? You mean that there is more? My sisters and brothers, I rose up this morning to tell you there is more in God for us than what we may already see and recognize. There is more for all saints, Episcopal Church in Detroit, Michigan, than what we are aware of. There is always more. And what we need to tap into that more is a fresh breeze of the Holy Spirit to move upon the face of our waters. There is more. There's more to be done. There's more that you can I than you and I can do. But it takes us being open to receive the more. Not an obliteration of what has been, but a renewal of what is. 
How about this? The psalmist says, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. In other words, sometimes the renewal comes when you stop and remember, like I said a couple of weeks ago, that everything that we have came from God anyway. And perhaps we will be renewed if we take ourselves out of the driver's seat and understand that God is the one that is calling all of the shots, that God is the one that is directing our path, that is guiding our way. Sometimes we are tired, and it's not because we're doing spiritual warfare. We are tired because we are doing something that was never intended for us to do. Sometimes we might realize that we are tired because we are doing the work that God reserved for himself to do. And we so busy trying to advise God and perhaps trying to be God that we end up taking on more than we can chew. Be renewed by understanding I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about, as Jesus says, consider the lilies of the field. They don't work, they don't toil, and yet they are more beautifully clothed than any of God's creatures. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and everything else is going to be added to you. Be renewed by saying, you know what, I'm going to stop doing what is not for me to do. I want to stop stressing myself out, trying to do something that everybody else is supposed to be doing. I'm just going to do what I'm supposed to do. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do His name. And then the psalmist starts talking about the voice of the Lord, that the voice of the Lord makes mountains split in half. The voice of the Lord makes uh, hills to skip. The voice of the Lord strips the forest bare. If the voice of the Lord does that, then what do you think it would mean if the voice of the Lord spoke to you as it spoke to Jesus at his baptism and says, you are my beloved? How much more renewal will you experience if you could imagine the voice of the Lord that moves over the face of the water, the voice of the Lord that makes the light light, that makes the land land, that makes the sea sea, actually speaks over you and says, and I love you too. That perhaps some of us are weary and weary and worn and sad like the hymn says because it's been a long time since we've heard that voice saying, you know I love you, right? God loves us because he loves us, not because of what we do or say or give or donate. God loves us because he loves us. And sometimes we can be so busy trying to do a whole bunch of things because we think it will get God to love us more. And actually God is just saying, you are my beloved and whom I'm well pleased. I just want you to stand in this water and let me lavish my Holy Spirit on you. Stop, take a break. Let me love you. I know it gets on my wife's nerves, but every sometimes in the kitchen, I just, I just got to say, you know what, girl, I just love you. <laughs> Not for any particular reason other than I love you. And sometimes we need to hear God say those words over us. You are my son. You are my daughter in whom I am well pleased. And so in a few moments when we renew our baptismal vows, I want you to remember, I want you to remember why it's important. Because the only way that we can keep doing this year in and year out and day in and day out and week in and week out is that we know that God loves us. We are renewed by the Word. We are renewed by the sacraments. Every time I stand behind that table, every time we take communion, the Bible says, do this. When you do this, you remember his death until he comes. We celebrate communion. Why? Because each and every one of us is given a tangible reminder of just how beloved of God we are. This is what he did for us. 
He died for us so that we might live. We take the communion as the beloved of God and with every sip and with every taste of that bread, that is God reminding us, I am loved by God because this is what he did for me. So how much more does that make you want to say, well, I guess, I guess I can give it another day. I guess I can give this love thing another week. I guess I can give this another forgiveness thing another couple of hours. And when I feel weary, I'll be right back at church being reminded again of how beloved of God we are. The season of Epiphany is about how God manifests himself in Jesus. In this season of Epiphany, I want you, my prayer for you is that you will experience a new, a fresh manifestation of God's love towards you, your family, and our church. It's not too late to begin again. It's not too late to start over. It's not too late to say the baptismal vows and this time mean it like you, like you didn't mean it last time. It's not too late to allow the Lord to speak his love over you. It's not too late to say, God, is there more to this? And be surprised by his answer. Yes, there's this thing called the Holy Spirit. An unending, inexhaustible source of renewal. I know I want the more of God, don't you? Gonna let the church say amen. Please stand as you are able. Dear people of God, in holy baptism, we follow the pattern of our Lord Jesus Christ. As he came up from the water, he was anointed by the Spirit of God and designated as God's Son. So we also are anointed by that same Spirit. We are reborn and adopted as sons and daughters with whom God is well pleased. Let us now renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. And now.
for my favorite part, the one-way water fight. Can you give me a little more than that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Please remain standing for the prayers of the people. Hello, all saints. We will now read the prayers of the people, form three. Let us read the bold text out loud together. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Bishop Curry, for those in Palestine, in Jerusalem, for those living in Ukraine, for the government of Russia. Let us pray for the sick, especially Arnie, Bianca, Cal Meter. Carol T, Catherine G, Catherine M, Charles, Delitzo, Daryl, David, Diane, Delano, Dennis D, Edward G, Emmett, Eric, Fontella, Helena, Shane, Janie, Joseph, Joyce C, Jomar, Kat, Kenneth B, Lena, Lenore, Lucia, Marcus R, Martha, Muriel, Nicole, Oscar, Patrick G, Pauline G, Rebecca M, Robert W, Rosalind, Ruby, Sean, Sheila A, Valerie, Vicki, Walter, Wanda, and Willie F, that they may be delivered from their distress. Let us pray for Michael our presiding bishop, Bonnie, our bishop, Moses, bishop of the Dominican Republic, Elizabeth, Donald and Craig, bishops in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, Christ Church, Adrian, St. Luke's, Santiago, Dominican Republic, St. Mark's, Hyanna, Dominican Republic, and for all the clergy and people. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Happy birthday wishes to Sheila A., Altona, Denise, Rennie, and Charles W. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Omniscient God, you know our faults and needs better than we ourselves. Accept the prayers which we now offer and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
please you saying signs of God's peace. Amen, friends. Good morning. Please take your seats for just a few moments. We're going to continue our celebration by receiving these tokens of the birth, the death, the baptism, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, what God has done for us in Jesus by receiving bread and wine. And all of those who claim the faith of Jesus and share with us in baptism are invited to come to this table. Uh, I don't see... Uh, any new faces in the room this morning and so we know how to do our communion procedures I will say for the benefit of those who are watching online uh, that while we are receiving communion of course you can receive the presence of the Lord sacramentally um, he is not just restricted to this room he comes near every heart that approaches him in faith and please know that you are with us in our thoughts um, and we know that Christ is with you wherever it is that you are while we are preparing the gifts of bread and wine and preparing the table, uh, members of this congregation sitting here in the room today, uh, while the ushers are moving down the aisles, uh, passing the plate, uh, feel free to put a token of your life and labor to the Lord inside. Uh, and as well as for those who are online, uh, we know that you can go to the allsaintsdetroit.org webpage, click on the giving tab, and you can do your giving then. And uh, I believe that's where you'll also find information of how to do it via Cash App and Zelle and all the, other, all the other ways to give. Our communion hymn, our offertory hymn rather, is hymn number 114 in the black and red hymnal, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph and St. Matthew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some brief announcements. Good afternoon and a happy new year to each and every one of you. My name is Juanita Woods and I'm the senior warden and I have the pleasure of extending a warm welcome to those who are visiting with us today, whether in person or online. We're glad you joined us and we hope that the service has been uplifting to you and we ask that you join us in our coffee hour in the chapel, which is outside. You'll see the sign on the way out. So please stay so that we can give you a warm welcome. And if you're here, you want to wave or give us your name, we appreciate that too. All right. So just to go over a few announcements on page 15 in your bulletin. As a reminder, we still need your pledge cards and your commitment of finance to our 2024 budget. If you have not done so and you need another uh, form, please check with the ushers. There are some available in the North X. The Vestry Board will meet today via Zoom at 3 o'clock, so we encourage you all to be prepared for that. As a community announcement, U of M, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Symposium, is having a symposium on transforming the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony. And the keynote speaker will be Michelle Alexander, who is the author of The New Jim Crow. That will occur on Monday, January 15th at 10 a.m. It's in person at Ann Arbor, and it's free and open to the public. Also, it will be live streamed. So if you want that information, please contact the church office and we will send you the flyer. But of course, you can go to the U of M website and get the additional information. Again, we are looking for members to serve on the vestry 2024. And the information for serving is listed on page 16. I'm not going to go through all of the details, but feel free to see Roger Weeks. Catherine Blakely or myself or any of the vestry members if you have questions and you're interested in serving. Please note that Bible study is now on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. at All Saints and noon at St. Matthew's in St. Joseph. So please note the change and it's still the same time from 5.30 to 7 p.m. If you are a leader of any ministry or committee or organization, we ask that you submit your annual reports by Friday, January 19th. Please send them electronically, and please note this date cannot be extended. We would like to have the reports available to distribute on the following Sunday in preparation for our meeting. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to contact the church office during regular business hours. This is a new year and we do need people to serve on the hospitality and coffee hour. The sign up book is no located in the North X. If you just wanna drop off some cookies or whatever, we need people to sign up. Um, you don't have to do a lot. The condiments and all of that are provided for you. If you have questions, you can see me or contact the church office. I wanted to make sure that everyone saw the pastoral update from Bishop Perry regarding Bishop Curry's visit. 
I hope that you would read that, but I also would like to share that the bishop was in surgery again on um, this weekend, and so uh, we encourage us all to pray for his continuing recovery, but he will not be here in um, February as noted in the bulletin. So please keep his family and him in your prayers. Um, the message came out on Saturday, so we didn't have time to update this, but please I ask that you pray for him as he continue his challenges with his health and, and God's grace. We know we can all continue to live prayer and prayer does change things. So thank you all for attention and have a blessed week. Back to the Reverend. Thank you, Ms. Woods. Would you please stand or kneel for the blessing? May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is in the black and red hymnal, hymn number 64, I Love to Tell the Story. Happy birthday, and we're going to say the birthday prayer found on page 830 in the Books of Common Prayer. We're going to say it together. This is one of those All Saints traditions that are so lovely and fun. Prayer number 50. Prayer number 50. And that's not a statement about how old you turned. It just so happens to be the number in the book. Prayer number 50. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Rennie, as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of your life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank mm -hmm. you.